Hey everyone, in this video we are going to look at Molten again and we're going to look at creating a GraphQL layer or middleware for Molten. Molten itself is built on a REST API that allows you to build a fully bespoke e-commerce uh, website. But what we would like to do uh, in this video and the next video is use React and the React Apollo modules to build a store that is built and driven by GraphQL. Now, because Molten doesn't have a GraphQL endpoint, we need to make one. And uh, doing so, it will decrease performance of your store a little bit. So I don't suggest that you maybe run this on a very high scale website, but if you're new to GraphQL or new to Molten, it could just be a great way to sort of get an in-depth overview of, of both areas like myself. So I hope one day soon that there is a solution with GraphQL for e-commerce, and I'm sure that the guys at Molten are, have it uh, in mind, um, as a lot of people adopt the new technologies and uh, things like that. I know Molten has got a very, very stable platform and they've, you know, the, the guys there work tirelessly on building uh, some of the best products and making it look amazing as well. Um, watch my other video on Molten, um, kind of give you a rundown of their website, what their platform is and does, um, and also have a look at my other videos for uh, an introduction to creating a GraphQL server. Um, this video, I will be creating my GraphQL server slightly different to how I did my videos. And that's just because I'm going to use the Apollo server implementation instead of the GraphQL JS module. Um, so let's get into it and let's just have a look to see what we're, uh, we are going to do. Um, I'm going to skip into uh, just quickly showing you the, um, the SDK for uh, JavaScript. We are going to be using this syntax here in our node library and this is pretty much all we're looking to do. We're not gonna create any mutations in this video, we're just gonna sort of get a, uh, a single product and get multiple products from our store and then in the, in the next video display those on a website via a GraphQL endpoint. Um, so we'll be using uh, the molten.products.all promise and we will return this, uh, our products via GraphQL. Um, of course, check out GraphQL to get yourself familiar with that. If you haven't, like I say, I have videos on that. Um, but let's dive in and see exactly the things that we are going to be uh, exposing through GraphQL. I want to keep this very, very uh, minimal and very basic so we don't get lost in any of the implementation details and we don't sort of start going down rabbit holes and, and things like that. Let's just try and have a very high level um, implementation of the um, Milton API. So what I'm going to do, like I said, is get multiple products and a single product, and we need to create a product type. So we're looking in here, um, we're going to grab the name, we're going to grab the description, the slug, um, and we can grab the status, uh, the SKU, and we look to uh, include the price perhaps in another video. Um, but there's certainly a lot of things in here that can sort of get us going. Um, so let's do that. If you haven't already, head on over to Molten and uh, try for free or log in if you have an account. I've got an account, so I've logged in and I've just created a simple store called Jamie's Store. And I get some uh, a client ID and a client secret here. Um, yes, I'm showing you these now on video. I think I can delete my store, so uh, that can't be abused. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, um, this is the Molten dashboard. Very, very cool, very powerful. You can add products in here. You can add brands. Uh, you can add some things in their um, images and, and view your orders and things. Uh, looks very cool and it works really well. And uh, let's dive into getting the project started. So I'm gonna create a directory and I'm gonna call it Molten GraphQL YouTube. And I'll pop this on GitHub as well at the end so you can see exactly what we've done here. Um, but inside of here, I'm just going to initialize a new uh, NPM project. I'm using Yarn. Um, it's super, super fast. I'm using the hyphen Y flag to accept all of the questions it asks, like the name, the version, the license, and things like that. It's not important right now. It's important that we just get going. And I'm going to add some libraries to get going. Uh, one being Express, the other being uh, Body Parser, GraphQL itself. GraphQL Server Express is very important because that's how we are going to 
hook our database together, uh, our uh, GraphQL server together using the Apollo server implementation. We're going to use the Apollo errors module, which allows us to sort of nicely wrap our errors that come from Molten. Uh, you know, errors in the sense that product isn't found or, um, you know, a product couldn't be created because of some validation constraints, things like that. Um, GraphQL tools, um, so we can build our schema and type definitions and Molten's SDK itself. And that's their latest version. So with that done, we'll just let that run and I will open up the project in Atom. You can use whatever editor you prefer. Um, I like Atom, uh, it's okay. Um, we've got our project in here. Uh, if we just check the uh, package JSON, what we can see is it's successfully added our dependencies. So that's awesome. So I'm gonna do a few things now. I'm just gonna create some files just as boilerplate. So the index.js file is where, where we are going to import our dependencies and sort of put our application together. And I'm gonna create a new file and I'm gonna call this type defs. And this is for our type definitions. And inside of here, all we are going to do is export a template, a template literal that includes our types. So things like type product is one and it has a name uh, called string. We'll add some onto there. Uh, I'd like to just create another file called resolvers and resolvers is where we will actually implement the resolving function uh, definitions. So when we do call a new product or we um, look to get multiple products, it looks to the resolver to see actually how it should do that. And this is where we'll call out to the Molten API using their SDK. So it's really cool. Uh, now we've got those files created, we'll just close them out and we'll just start um, populating away here. So we're gonna create a, um, a product type here. This isn't an input type, so we can define some IDs and a slug um, and what else? We have a description, which is also a string and an SKU, which is a string, which is required if we pop back to uh, the Molten documentation. Uh, we see that all of these here are um, required, SKUs required. So we're gonna be able to get something back from our API. And I'm gonna use their dashboard to um, populate a product um, because we are not going to cover mutations in this video. So with that done, let's pop back to the code and just see if we're missing anything. We can pop the status in here. And again, that's a string as well, so I'll pop that bang on the end. And that's what we have there. Excellent. So the next thing is to basically just set up our application. So it's important our type definitions and it's gonna create the schema and we'll do that now. So let's get started by requiring express. And this is inside of the index.js file in our project. Uh, we need to import express. We also need to import um, body parser so we can see what's, what requests are coming in um, because we can uh, use get requests and um, post requests for uh, this GraphQL endpoint. We will also uh, import GraphQL uh, Express and Graphical Express, and that's gonna come from the um, uh, Apollo Express server module that we created and make executable um, schema and that's going to come from GraphQL tools and again format error is going to come from uh, Apollo errors module and lastly we will import the molten gateway and that's just require and it's uh, at molten slash SDK I think um, I think this is allows them to nest multiple node modules within uh, one account. I think that's what the at symbol does here. If you, if that looks a bit uh, unfamiliar, um, so with that done, what we'll next do is define our type definitions. And if you remember, we created a, full, a file called uh, type defs, and we also have a folder a file called resolvers. 
and that's fun to resolve us too. Cool. So let's go ahead and create a molten instance and we'll use the molten gateway and the molten gateway requires uh, the client ID. Now the client ID, if we have a look at the JavaScript Im implementation, um, we see in here that we've imported the gateway and we have, uh, we're initializing the molten gateway here and it needs that client ID. So if we pop to the dashboard, uh, forge.molten, you will be able to get your client ID. And the client ID allows you to um, read from the API. The client secret allows you to do a lot of um, mutations and post requests, things like that. Um, but we're not going to be doing this in this video. We're just going to read from it. So all we need is the client ID. So we'll paste that into there. Cool. Um, great. So the next thing is to stitch our schema um, together, which is make executable schema. And we'll pop our type definitions and resolvers. So that kind of just make, puts those together and hooks things up. Um, we don't have to do any of the boilerplate code that we had to do um, in a previous series I recorded um, using the GraphQL JS module. Uh, Apollo is just a little bit sensible here and it, it just handles a lot of the defaults. Um, so you haven't got to write a lot of um, things over and over again. Um, I like either way. Um, this, is, this is a really nice, simple way. Uh, a really nice approach. Um, the other way is perfectly fine as well. Uh, next, we'll create an instance of the Express framework and we will get a app server uh, so we can start mounting some middleware. Uh, we are going to mount uh, slash GraphQL and that will allow us to send requests to it, um, get and post requests. And we're going to um, use the JSON part of body parser. And then we're going to um, initialize uh, and set up our um, GraphQL middleware. Uh, so we will pass format error, the schema, and we're gonna use context here. And we're gonna pass molten through as context. And we did this in my other uh, video series where we were able to access the API through there, our database models through the context. Same um, things apply here. Uh, we will just do that and also we will uh, mount graphical on here so we can just pop over there and create um, some requests. So this is endpoint URL and that's the URL to GraphQL. Um, graphical allows us to create requests and it kind of just provides a nice little interface to do that. Um, and we'll listen on the current port or port 5000 if there isn't a port defined. Cool. So all of that is um, looking good. So with that done, uh, let's just check the type definitions. Type definitions are looking cool and pretty much set up so we can go ahead and perhaps um, start to um, write a query. And the next thing we need to do is define a query type and we're gonna do all products. And this is gonna return an array of the product type here. Um, we're also going to be able, uh, want to have the ability to request a product and that will return uh, a singular product as well. Um, the uh, Milton also have a brand um, part to their API which we could just do now very quickly um, so we can show that it doesn't just work with um, the products, but if we have a look at their brand, uh, creating one, which, so we get a type again, cool, which is option brands, the other, the products were option products, uh, name, uh, description and status. We, um, we can import these, name and description and status. Uh, we can do that inside of here. Um, so let's pop a type of brand and the brand will have an ID. It will have a name, which is a string. It will have a slug, which is a string, a description, which is a string. And we could create an enum uh, for um, status. So we could do something like active status. Um, and then we could define um, 
Agninum active status and the statuses were draft and live, but they may or may not come back as strings. So um, to reduce complexity for this tutorial, we'll just get rid of that for now. And then below here, we'll just do all brands and that will return an array of brands. And then again, if we pass in an ID for a brand, it should return a brand. Cool. So this is our type definition. So just take a moment, have a look over it, read it and see exactly um, what's going on. Make sure you're comfortable with that. Um, we can then move on to creating our resolvers. Cool, so if you're familiar with that, we'll next move on to uh, resolvers. And inside of here, I'm just going to export uh, our query type. And if you remember, we have a query uh, type called all products and that allows us to get all of the products. We'll pass in our root query, our current arguments. There isn't any, um, but that's the required second parameter uh, argument. And then we can destruct molten from the third parameter that's passed in. And what we will do is we will return uh, a promise and that allows us to just dive on over to the molten API and await on uh, some response. Um, and then we'll just grab the products. Um, molten, uh, it's molten.products.all, like we've seen on their um, homepage, the, the SDK starter page, and it returned a promise, which we can use to get the data from there, because that's how that was returned. And inside of there, um, we can console log that out just to see that data, so we know exactly what's returning, and then we can just resolve that data as well. And the console log will just allow us to debug it in the console if nothing's returned. Um, it's not required. But then we'll catch any errors and we will reject those as well. So save that and we will um, give this a try uh, before we move on to creating the other resolvers. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and give this a try. So if we pop on over to um, our terminal, and we just try and run node.index, we will then be able to see what's going on. Cool. So we get an error, Apollo Express server cannot be found. Uh, if we just pop over to um, here, um, we will be able to see exactly what's going on. Um, perhaps I'm not including the correct module. Um, can just check that out. Um, Inside of index, it's just called GraphQL Server Express. There are two different versions of this. Uh, one is newer than the other. Um, I think Apollo are in the process of changing those. Wouldn't worry too much about that right now. Um, I'll leave a note in the description on how you can do that. Okay, so I made a small mistake and the small mistake is in our type definitions. I was using ES2015 and um, we're unable to do this. So if we just type module.exports uh, and then equals, that will then return our type definition. So if we pop on over to um, uh, hyperterm, what we should now be able to do is run node.index.js and that will um, start GraphQL. We don't see any output here because we didn't tell um, express, uh, we didn't provide express with a callback to um, do something. So what we'll do is just run um, server here and we'll pop into graphic, graphical on port 5000. And then what we should be able to see if everything is working correctly is if we um, begin to write query and the IntelliSense pops open, we should see that we have all products. And from all products, if we grab the ID, the name, uh, we'll grab the slug, we'll grab the description, we'll try and grab as much as we can, SKU, and we'll grab the um, status. Hit that and that is now going to make a request to Molten and we get some data back which is really cool and this information, uh, this response is coming directly from Molten and if I show you the Molten um, dashboard which um, I've just closed, what we should be able to see inside of the catalog products is one product and that's trainers and inside of here 
if we uh, update this here and we'll create some more um, differences. Uh, Maggie, cool. And this is our SKU, and this could literally be one, two, three, and I E two. Um, cool. And if we save this product, save down there, and pop back to graphical, if we rerun this, we should see that our updates have been done successfully. So it's really, really cool. And it's um, something that we can uh, evolve on. And we can now look to create a resolver to get that one product. So we've got this product here. We know the ID of this product. What if we just want to get that product? Well, right now, if we want to pass in the ID, product ID, and we'll pass the ID in as a string. If we want to get the ID back again for some reason, the name, the slug, we want the same information as what's here. If we hit return, it's going to return null. And that's because we haven't wrote our resolver for it yet. So let's go ahead and begin to write that resolver. So inside of this file, uh, inside of our query definition resolver, we will um, just create a product resolver and that requires the root and from the arguments, we are going to destructure the ID. And from the context, we are going to grab the, the molten context. Then we are going to, as normal, return a new promise. And that promise obviously has two arguments, uh, resolve and reject. And inside of here, we're going to call to molten.products.get. And inside of the get part, we are going to pass in our ID. This returns a promise. And again, let's grab the data from there. And we will um, log that to the console because um, we aren't, uh, you know, we're just doing this on the fly. If anything breaks, we'll be able to quickly see in the console what's going on. I'd encourage you to do the same uh, when you're working with new APIs. So it's always nice just to see what's going on in the console, see what your code's bring it back what, you know, and see the differences if anything goes wrong um, when you just hack it away like this um, and trying to get something done very quickly. Uh, let's resolve the data and again, let's catch any errors that they provide. Um, and then we'll re uh, reject the um, resolver promise. Uh, then what we should be able to do is after here is we can copy the um the parts from from earlier um if we just grab that uh what's gone wrong um so we are going to wrap that there my bad cool um and we can pop that there cool so if we grab this product and all products resolvers if we just chain these onto the end and we change the word product to be brand, we should very, very easily be able to get all of our brands and a brand by ID. So if we save this file, and again, if we start the server, that starts, it hasn't given us any errors. If we pop on over to graphical, uh, we will now be able to run this again and we will get that product back. Excellent, that's really cool. And we'll try all brands. Uh, you may have to refresh your page for that to show up. And we'll grab the name and the description and that's gonna get a brand back. So we've got a brand, uh, Nike uh, or Nike and the description of that as well. If we head on over to the dashboard, um, we can um, then uh, create a new brand. Um, we'll just put in here uh, DC, DC, and it's live skater shoes. And we'll save those as well. We'll head on back to graphical and we will run it again. And you'll see we've got those skate shoes back. We grab the ID. And as you can probably guess, we'll pop in ID. Grab that, grab the ID back again, uh, the description, and we'll see that that resolver works as well. Brilliant. Um, so that's pretty much it for this episode. The next episode, I will use the React Apollo module, 
we'll create a very, very simple storefront, which just lists all of our products. And um, again, below there will list all of the brands because that's what we've written here. Um, so hopefully this video has been helpful. It's shown you how to get started with the Apollo server and how to get started with GraphQL. And most importantly, how to get started with uh, building a GraphQL layer on top of um, a non-existent GraphQL back platform like Matt, uh, Molten. So hopefully this has been super helpful. And if you're using other tools or sites that don't have a GraphQL endpoint, but it's something that you're interested in uh, doing and learning about, then this is something that you can just take and roll and, and get running to, to roll your own uh, GraphQL endpoint. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video that I, I really wouldn't encourage that you use this in production for heavy, heavy sites. Um, you can. Um, what you could look to do is maybe cache some things in GraphQL so you're not calling uh, Molten every time. Um, and that would be uh, super helpful and speed things up a little bit for you. Um, but hopefully uh, some time down the line that Molten look to integrate this uh, within their system um, so we can really take some benefits uh, of their API um, such as subscriptions, so when a new product's added or things like that, we can make, you know, listen to changes and stuff like that um, and, and uh, not have to write as much code um, to get started. So who knows? Let's see what goes on. I think there's a post on their forum um, that's sort of toying with the idea or someone certainly requested it. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens, but hopefully this has been a really cool video and you've enjoyed it. So have a good one. Happy coding. Enjoy.